if there is an upload of someone you care about, um, you obviously would feel a great responsibility to, well, just a great responsibility for that person. Even if that person, even if the relationship you were building with that uploaded consciousness became really unhealthy and unhelpful. <laughs> so, um, how do you let, how do you let that person go? <laughs> gonna work you you uh, do a pull you do a push and then Peter picks it up on that side uh -huh. on scene five uh, we just um, had our first weeks of rehearsal in the in the studio um, and we um, yeah we, we rehearsed the piece musically with the conductor Alza Tausk and, and uh, the singers Julia Bullock Roderick Williams um, and um, I worked on the staging so already uh, quite 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 one world now Really nice, really nice. We're now at the point where we've done the first two run-throughs, and um, we're now diving, diving in deep. So we're gonna work more on the character development. This was beautiful, all good. You're there in time. I think, I think we're in a very good place where, where we are now in the rehearsal process, and uh, it's, it's so nice to be able to, to tune into the details right now. And, uh, and it's an amazing, uh, cast uh, to do it with. They're super open to, to go further and they, they have the same sense of perfectionism, um, which is lovely. It's like a blessing for a, for a director to have that. So the first let's try this new arrival to the front section. So in the season 16, 17, uh, when I was appointed in the spring of 17, then, then you start to build a bit your seasons and you think, okay, world premiere, in which direction will we go? And I heard that Michel was working on a new film opera at that time. And then we had this meeting and um, Michel told me about, about the project and his ideas around uploads. And I was fascinated and I said, please, let's do it together. And then I convinced him to do it for the festival, Opera Forward Festival because it just seemed to be such an ideal fit. Upload is about a father and a daughter. The father um, uh, has, uh, has, is suffering from a trauma and decides he can't go on with life anymore. And he decides to, uh, to go to this, this very um, exclusive clinic to have himself uploaded. I play the father uh, in this piece, and I know only that I'm father to my daughter. Neither of us have names. Neither of us have backstory. His daughter doesn't know anything about it, and um, she's then confronted with him as an upload. He just disappeared. And turned into what? Into who? Center in the opera are the father and the daughter. It's about their family relation. What, what is that reality? That's not one that I relate to, and I don't know then, after this uploading, how can I then relate to him? It's about what makes us human, and do we need a body to be human? I suspect the audience, as well as us as actors, asking ourselves questions. What, uh, what happens if you, if you delete an upload? Can they even be deleted? If it's an exact copy of a human being and it 
keeps developing, do you still trust that this is the person you once knew as a biological person? So there's all these really interesting ethical um, sides to it, which, yeah, which make me drawn to the, to the subject of the opera. You know, having an idea for an opera and, and um, ending up in rehearsals, that's, that's a long, long route. The first step was making a libretto, and I, I uh, worked with two wonderful um, dramaturgs, um, Madelon Koyman and Niels Nuyte. And quite early on, I also was in touch with Turn Mosk, the designer, and we started thinking about how are we going to visualize this upload? What do we need for that? And my mind was, when he explained and talked about it, exploding, because I'd never heard about uploads before. Uh, especially not mind uploads, it's something futuristic. It's like when you have the first conversation, I already have the feeling he has it in mind. And then it's nice to help him puzzling uh, and to see and discover what is it, what he has in mind. And now we're testing uh, the layers and the way uh, we're gonna use them and if it's gonna work to create a new world. So with one flick of a button, we, we open up the world behind the screen and, and yeah, that creates an enormous amount of depth. We have the video content, we have the set design who change in position, we have the mise-en-scene where the, where, where the, the performers are in, on, on the stage, we have the lighting, we have the, the music, and it's yeah, the queuing and, and bringing everything together on so many computers and layers, that's also a challenge for us to get it in the right timeline, actually. He turned anti-clock, so we want the camera to go anti-clock around him, 360 So this is, um, this is Darren Brito, he's um, creating the, um, the functionality of the avatar, of the digital version of the father figure in the opera. It's a super complex patch. Um, basically, we, we have an array of cameras filming uh, the singer from all sides and creating a digital model of the singer in real time. Okay, let's do it again. Same point. And we can do it without this push, but just the push of the, of the third uh, screen. During the libretto making process, we, we, um, we, we quite soon imagined going back in time to this clinic where the father would be uploaded. And uh, we thought it would be a very nice way to do that on film. So there are film projections. Um, and often in my work, the film projections are more than just, um, you know, they're also there to, to make a connection with the actual space of the stage. So the singers on stage relate to the film, they, they're, they're interacting with the film. Right now, uh, it's my first day of filming it. Yeah, it's the, the, the video component, the film component to Michelle's opera. So um, we're here at this company that um, uploads brains of people to give them eternal life. And I play a psychiatrist. I always work on, on three levels. Um, I, I compose the music, I think about what's happening on stage during a certain moment in the music, um, and if there's film, what's happening in the film. So these three layers I develop in parallel. There's this piece of the story, which is very much um, a, a history and an investigation into what the technology is and what we do and the people behind that technology. And then there's the, the live, um, the opera uh, component, which is very much about the people, and that's about the, the human effect. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's been said of us that this uh, is the next step of our evolution. By creating the music and the staging and the film all by myself, you know, on my desk, on my attic, there's a certain risk of it being unpractical or not working or you know, and, and, and that's why I need the dramaturgs, I need the conductor, I need uh, the designers uh, to, to ask me difficult questions. And honestly, it's, it, keeps, it keeps growing and changing every day. It's evolving all the time. So that, in that way, it's super satisfying to know that we're not, we're not in any locked position. Uh, and, you know, there are a lot of pauses, though. It's <laughs> <laughs> it is true that tech requires a lot of time. Um, 
But that's okay. It's like, that's just, it's a part of, it's worked into the rehearsal process. With these kind of projects with so many layers, it's always, I, I think I dream about a certain outcome. I, I, um, it's very hard to imagine how a film will look like if you haven't shot it, or how a staging will look like if you haven't done it yet. So in some respects, I'm, 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 it, I'm surprised by what, what, um, what, we, uh, what we come up with in the rehearsal space, and new elements are added. Um, not in the least that the, the singers themselves and the team themselves, everybody comes with ideas and input. Um, when I first worked on a piece similar in some ways to this, uh, I went to see him to audition for this and he accepted me. And when I asked my agent, so who's directing? They said, oh, the composer's directing. And I thought, oh dear, that's a, that's a mistake. That's, that's not going to work. Um, and I was proved completely wrong. I learned a great deal from working on that piece with Michelle. Not least, I, I learned a little bit about how I might be able to adapt acting for the operatic stage to acting for film. But I think maybe because of your, um, you know, your, your depression, um, I, think, I think you must have gone through all the options that there are. But Michel also has the, the technical side of things because he comes to composition from a technical background. He has the director's eye, both in the film and live on, on stage. Um, and he, he is, he's the one person who can pull all the threads together. Um, so in those terms, it's entirely logical that he's directing, because he's the only person who knows what's going on. And then when he turns away from you and walks to the um, downstage right position, that's where you sort of separate, so you make an opposite. When I write an aria, I, d I don't only think about what is this? What are the pitches that they're going to sing? But also, is there a film? How is the film relating to what she sings and, and what's happening on stage? Um, and I decide sort of the uh, the interplay of these three layers for each moment of the opera. So they can alter, you know, in each scene. So sometimes the scene is completely about the music. Sometimes it's completely about the film. And uh, by doing that myself, I can basically create this this um, yeah this play of changing perspectives. And it has to do with that combination of, of images, pre-recorded sound, live music, but those two are making something completely new. It's not that the pre-recorded sound files or the pre-recorded images dictate exactly how the performance will run. I mean, it's always, always, in, in an opera you have a libretto, which is very, often very specific, but with music we have the advantage of being able to find the spaces between these words, you know, create something which is much more abstract and doesn't have true uh, meaning. So I think music, in a way, um, comes to me quite intuitively and um, extends the world of the, of the characters and of the protagonist um, in a more abstract way. It feels as if it's, um, it comes straight from his heart. It's, not, I don't want to call it more emotional because it's, it's touching. I think that's, that's a better word. It, 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 it touches. Uh, you hear and experience a kind of freedom of just him wanting to write the very best music he can think of. Um, and, and, and that comes across really strong. So we have singers that need to be ready, but we also have a digital avatar that needs to be ready, and sometimes it has a temper of its own. Some mornings it doesn't want to, uh, to do what we want to do, and it crashes. So the upload crashes, basically. This is one of the big challenges in the opera. How can we make something that you can relate to, a projection of a person that you feel you can relate to as an audience, and also that Julia, who plays the daughter, can relate to and sing with. 
that we really feel that there's part of the same space. This was one of my big, big worries that we wouldn't be able to do that. And, and I'm ha very happy that uh, through a lot of research and, and testing, we, we now have something that, that I feel really works. What does it tell us about the future opera? I think Michel helps us to make big steps how to present opera today already, um, how, to, how to use these new technologies, um, have them intertwined with our traditional way of making opera, and by bringing it together um, with so much expertise, because this is what he has, he has always worked on this, he helps us also as a company to make these steps. I find it fascinating. I remember Michel saying in the teaser trailer that the technology, awesome though it is, is there only to tell the story. It's, he's always interested in the people. Yeah, I, I mean, I do believe that I, the, the subjects of my operas are often subjects that a lot of people can relate to. Um, you know, in the operas there are all, always sort of slightly overblown emotions of loneliness, of depression or of, of loss. Um, but I still feel that the, the, the essence of this is, is, is there in all of us. And um, that's why, you know, I think an audience can find their way in to an opera like Ablaz, um, because it touches their own lives. In the absence of any background details, I end up, of course, playing him as a version of me. So I can relate to Julia, to Julia's character, um, very much as I would to my own daughter. Very early on, she's already challenging not only how, like, the, his assumption of her willingness <laughs> to participate, and I, I, I really appreciate that that was brought forward so plainly in, in this piece and that it actually was not a resolved conversation. When I, um, when I started thinking about this opera a few years ago, I couldn't have foreseen that we're now suddenly in an age of uh, COVID and uh, we, we, we have to keep our distance, we can't touch uh, each other anymore, um, which is of course in an eerie way very much connecting to the theme of uploading. Um, saying goodbye to your physical body and existing only in digital form is something which has that sad consequence that you, if your dad becomes an upload, you can't hug your dad anymore. Um, and this is also one of the themes in the opera, do we need a body to, uh, to be human? And do we need a body to have true interhuman contacts? It's like I'm reading a poem I deeply love The spaces between the words almost
I think it's important for me to, to ask quite a few questions, but not give all the answers. Mm -hmm. So um, not only about uploading, because it's still a fictive thing, you know, but, uh, but also about how um, the decisions these characters in the opera make in the end. I suspect the audience, as well as us as actors, um, come away from the experience asking ourselves questions. You know, once you've seen Michelle's opera and you walk away, then things begin to occur. Why didn't they do this? So why didn't the father consult his daughter about being uploaded? And, and that is a, it's, you almost glide past it, but it's a central question for me, why I didn't talk to my daughter about this whole experience. Never has to experience loss. How does that change your psyche? Um, I find elements of that really scary, legitimately scary. Um, I don't know if that would liberate us or what it would do, you know, I just, I don't know. Everybody uh, watching the opera is asking the question and basically we're asking ourselves, are we in favor of eternal life? Do we want to live forever in one form or the other? The, the moment where the scientist sits in his uploading chair and the, the psychiatrist takes his glasses off and closes his eyes and you know that this is his last moment as a, as a tactile human. Um, and the music builds up as a, as a moment of great sort of, you know, ceremony and triumph as he finally gets uploaded. But behind that also, we all know is this kind of Oh my God, stop. The, the thing is I write pieces that I would, which is a very simple answer, but I, I write the piece that I would want to hear myself. And, uh, and uh, I hope that, um, yeah, I hope that more people are interested in it because I'm interested in it. And the only way for me to write a, an opera or to write a piece is that I have to believe in it myself and I have to really dive in and, and lose myself in it. And, uh, then it's truly mine and then I can only hope that an audience will connect to it and I can open enough windows for them to see through. <laughs>